So that is part two. Let us now jump into part um, uh, category three and our final for part one. Yeah. Um, unexpected gem. Unexpected uh, gem. What? No, those never happen. Yeah, well, they do from time to time. Oh. Okay. As as, we, as we've seen before. Impossible. Brew. This is gonna be very interesting. I'm curious what each of us have as our topics here, but um, <laughs> unexpected gem for us guys um, is. Really just a game that subverted our expectations. It's a game that maybe we didn't have any thoughts about playing or getting or whatnot, but we gave it a shot, mm -hmm. and it really, for some reason, went above and beyond like what we really... We were like, oh my god, this game is... We love it for whatever reason. Right. Um, and it's on this list here. So that is Unexpected Gem. Yep. It's back to me. Yep. I get to start. The time go. Thank you, sir. Um, unexpected gem <clears throat> number one. Make sure. I just don't know which one I want to talk about first. Talk about this one first. Um, number one of my runner-ups for unexpected gem is what the golf. WTG. Hmm. Usually it's whiskey tango foxtrot. Do you know about this game? Only reason I know that it exists is um, Adderall in, in chat the other night was spamming it. It was like, I'm like, what the heck is this? Let me look it up. This game is crazy. I've played this. I'm, I'm, I'm showing Will a little bit of the video here um, while I'm talking about it. This is basically just like this what weird physics-based game <laughs> based around golf. So it's basically like you have you're in this like laboratory and you're going through these levels to kind of i guess go through and explore and open up the doors and i guess solve some mystery there but really it's like these slot of mini games huh that where you're hitting a ball a lot of the times it is not a ball it may be other things there's one where i was i just were, saw a chair there's a Ooh. house that's a bicycle arrows there were golf clubs it like you're in space, like all these different environments to like get the huh. item from one area to the hole. That was an egg. Uh, that looked at, like Angry Birds. Golf is a lie. All right, that so, was a portal it's reference. So, it's so crazy. I I picked this game up on my mo on mobile device on my iPhone, and just to try it out, I'm like, oh, I'll give it a shot here. Played through this. I was like, this game is silly and crazy, and I love it. Oh, it's, like, oh, it it's on Arcade? Let me download this. Yes, it's on Apple Arcade. It's on um, Epic Game Store. I think it's on consoles now, as of this recording. It's on PC. What the Golf is great. It's so it's fun, silly, random, just games, mini games. I could not get enough of it after trying it for the first time, and I, I love it. I recommend it to anyone. If you have a mobile device, it's a great time. My, my nephew... Loved it. He was like going through and like knocking the. Um, there's one where it's like 50 golf clubs, and you have to get all 50 golf clubs to like this hole. And oh, like every goodness. time you swing it, all the 50 clubs move. There's one where every time you swing, the hole moves to a different location on the map. Uh, uh, there's one. There's one where you have to um, you have to move a vase, but you can't let the vase hit anything because it will break. You have to get it to the end. It's a lot of silly stuff that goes on here. Okay. But um, I just loved everything about What the Golf. It was super awesome. Okay. Had it, it like looking at the list and like of all the games I played, I'm like this is the one that has to be on here for Unexpected Gem. Did not expect to have. I thought it was something silly, something stupid. Like I'll give it a shot. Did not expect it. Okay. To be as much fun as I did. I'll have to give that a try because that looks interesting. Right, right, and you like you'll play. And you're like, oh my god, this is kind of fun. Okay, all right. So this one's a bit more serious than what the golf. Uh, this is Days Gone, actually. For yours? Yeah. One of your runner-ups? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll talk about it in a minute because like we've already talked about the game a little bit, mm -hmm. but I had to say it. it's like, no, nah, dude, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm like, mm, mm, no, nah, I'm gonna tell you. Now, that's obviously not my winner. But that, that is one of your... Oh, yeah. That's one of your runs. Okay. No, you finish your other one, I'll, and then, then I'll one. jump in. And I'm just like, I, I can't hold that one back anymore because I do want to talk to you about it. Okay. Okay. Other unexpected gem. This was kind of 
But this was another one where I had a difficulty between this and my winner. Okay. I, I thought about it for a little bit, but then once I really thought about it, I was like, no, okay. Clearly, this one should be the runner-up, and I know what my winner is going to be. Hmm. hmm. I don't know. I don't know if you expected this. Um, if you expected this, I'm curious. If you, Astral Chain. Is stop my- resisting. <laughs> Hashtag stop resisting. <laughs> Hashtag stop resisting. That, that was the funniest thing I saw in our, in the Twitch streams. Was literally Cameron's playing it, it like straight up. Your interdimensional cops trying to stop these guys. And somebody, I can't remember who it was, typed hashtag stop I resisting. Was, I think it was Rurutu. Was it Rurutu? It could be. Um, dude, that had me cracking up. Astral Chain, let me tell you now. Astral Chain is good. It is great. I'm at least happy that it got the nods that it did over at the Game Awards. It sucked that it didn't win anything, but... I will, I will tell you... I'm going to tell you a story. It's a quick one. It's not going to be like a Seth Long story. Okay, cool. So <laughs> I don't need to buckle up and like you know get some hyperfuel or anything? No, no, you don't. You don't have to worry right, about cool. that. I 100% did not plan on buying this game at all. Or playing it or anything. Okay. Period. The week it was launching... Mm-hmm. I started watching some coverage on it and ended up on a stream or something like that. And I'm not even stream. I, I never saw gameplay, just like the videos and clips. And I was like, this is kind of interesting. It's from Platinum Games. I kind of generally understand their combat. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I really, really, really wanted to try this out okay. before I bought it, but I didn't get a chance to. There were no demos, which I think, I actually think having a demo for this game would really lend well to people getting more invested and involved Let in them trying it. it out just like they did with uh, Damien X Machina and a couple other games this year yeah but for some reason I'm in the store and I'm like you know what I'm going to I'm going to have a leap of faith I this looks interesting to me I'm going to give this a shot let me jump in here and try it out okay this game is awesome love it it like the pure action fun for people who don't know Astral Chain. It is this um, action adventure game from Platinum Games uh, on Nintendo Switch. You are basically these. I. You you are this officer, this detective in like this futuristic Tokyo, Japan area called a um, officer. You're a neuron officer of the Special Police Task Force. And you are a Neuron Officer because you ha- you can take control of what are called um, legions. Basically, you have this like big control device on your arm, and you throw it out, and it has the legion chained by the neck. And you use the legion to control. Basically, you can use it to fight for you. It also, what Neuron does is they, as you so eloquently put it earlier, they there is this like interdimensional alien force coming through to um, the city. And the neuron officers, they're only all the only ones who can solve those crimes because being attached to the legion allows them to see the other legion that are coming in and um, you know causing mm. chaos in the world. Okay, <clears throat> um, no, like regular people can't see them; they're just like, "What the hell? A ghost or what's going on?" Um, so you're part of this task force. You go through, and you like the first part of the game is, of course, learning how to play your character because it's. It's very interesting in the fact that you have your one stick controls your legion. Like you can freely move your legion around and then have it attack and do special abilities and stuff towards your enemies. You go through with your um, your sibling. So whether you, if you're a boy or a girl, whatever you choose, the other person is your twin. So if you're a boy, they're a girl. If you're a girl, they're a boy. You go through on this task force and it's you and her and kind of learning your story and controlling your legions. You're like one of five or six people that have legion. <laughs> And then, um, through some events, I'm not going to spoil, you mm-hmm. are the only one who ends up with a legion. Okay. And so it's now the, uh, the Neuron Special Task Force office now relies on you to help solve the mystery of these legion while they're coming into this world and whatnot, while you take your legion and expand on their power and their abilities to become all awesome. Um, all powerful. Yes. This is pure Platinum Games fun in action. Um, the kind of bits like the, the detective solving and whatnot are super fun and awesome. Uh, like you, a lot of the chapters are like you go in, you're in this big area and you like doing these tasks for people that give you experience points. 
kind of and then you're solving this main case file that eventually leads you to your encounter and okay. your boss fight for that area where you know some usually it from what I've played so far, it's like somebody gets captured and taken to the interdimensional realm, and you, since you're a legion, you're the only one who can. You have a legion. You're the only one who can go into that world without being hurt by its effects, because you have a legion protecting you. So you have to go in and defeat the boss in order to save the people before they die in that realm. Okay. Um, combat is great. It is. It is fun. And engaging and fast fluid because you like you're having to fight yourself. You can switch between a baton or a gun, short or long range, and then you have your legion flying around doing their sword attacks and like long range stuff. It's really cool. Um, the characters and story are very Japanese, very anime. Like oh, I would, no. I wouldn't be surprised if some anime is made of this game. It's really great. Um, but it was a game again. I had no intention of buying, no intention of purchasing went on a leap of faith because of some of the coverage I saw and mm -hmm. I do not regret its purchase one bit I love this I love this game this is one of my favorite games of this year regardless of everything and anything we say on the podcast and I think it was by and large like one of my most unexpected gems because I did not expect to even like the game much less have as much fun as I did with it very cool So you make me actually want to buy it it's really awesome. Like I, like we'll have to watch trailers and stuff. Like I have to show you. Like it's really cool. Yeah. I definitely, it's it's a recommended mm -hmm. game that I could give to anybody to check out. Cool. So you're up. So I'm up. Uh, I've got something pulled up. You guys can't see it. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna show it because it's a, another creator's content. And I want them to get credit for their work. Yes. So this I'm gonna play muted so Cam can see one of the reasons why it's an unexpected gem to me. This day's gone. Okay. And I, I know I, I kind of jumped the gun earlier, but I'm actually excited about this. <laughs> What's cool? Cool. Yeah, because my favorite thing is one of the freedoms it, of ways you can play. Because just like anything else, mm -hmm. like I was talking about with the Outer Worlds, it is one of those where, cool, you've got this stuff going on. You get some freedom on how you can approach it. As an example, what we're watching right now is a guy is stealthed. He throws a fire uh, Molotov into a train car full of freakers okay. throws an attractor outside the train car pulls out all these other freakers and is just throwing massive molotovs with gallon jugs into them now he's like 858 days in kind yeah, of he deal. seems to play for a while okay yeah um but it's one of those where he's stealth killing an entire horde that's pretty impressive and so it's one of those where it's like oh dude this guy is showing exactly what I like about it. Um, so you know, one of the first times you run into the hordes, like you get some options or whatever, you can jump mm -hmm. on the bikes right away, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, like my favorite thing about doing the freakers is the stealth melee kills you can do on them. The, okay. Yeah, and just like the the ways you can approach this stuff, that is what got me into this game. And there because, is a lot of freedom in how you can attack. Not even just the hordes, but like the singular enemies in and of itself. It's mm -hmm. really nice. Yeah, and so just little things like that. I'm a big fan of like games like Far Cry 4. And it's the main reason I'm a big fan of that kind of stuff is the way they let you approach scenarios. Like in Far Cry, my at least in the fourth one, my big thing I loved doing in that game mm -hmm. was getting the bow and arrow and only using that to take out the castles. Because you had castles you had to take oh, down. Okay. And it would severely limit you on the ways you can approach things. But it gave you that different, like, all right, cool, let me slow down. Let me look at how I'm approaching this. I'm trying to be stealth. I'm trying to do this. Because with a bow and arrow, you can't take on hundreds of dudes. You cannot. So it does change how you're going to handle that. Yeah. And I like that you can do similar things, but with, like, suppressed weapons or Molotovs. And I honestly, I really like the motorcycle mechanics in this game. I do too. Like, it's one of the things I liked about this game was the fact that it was, unlike other zombie games, it had, and I say Soulsborne like style, but like the fact that it was hard, like you couldn't. You're not just going to blitz through this. Yeah, even if you have, you're fully set up with an arsenal and there's only like five or six freakers coming at you, you can still die very quickly. Yes. And like the fact that you do have to keep attention to your gas, your maintenance on your bike. Your weapons mm -hmm. and stuff, like, it's very meticulous and it does make the game a lot more challenging and I like it more for it. Yeah, no, and 
honestly, that's what pulled me in because if I hadn't have talked to our uh, or you know, our buddy D, mm-hmm. it would be one of those where I wouldn't have picked this game up. Pretty cool. If I hadn't talked to him about it, that is what brings me into that game. Okay. So that's why I pulled that up. Day's yeah. gone. Day's gone. Number one. S- number two is going to be Grindstone. Grindstone. Ah! <laughs> it's yes! so good. Um, Who would have thought taking Bejeweled, getting rid of the microtransaction bullcrap, and just putting like a Viking skin on it with different random enemies would make it that enjoyable? Yes. Yeah, I love this game for how simple and mindless it can be, but at the level of strategy it makes you think about too. Because it's not just about crushing your enemies. It's about crushing your enemies to hit certain objectives to be able to move to the next level. Would you call it like a match three type of Uh, game? No. No, because the more you match, the more powerful you get with your attacks to be able to take out certain enemies. You know what I'm talking about. Like the turrets and speed the bats. You get more strength. Yeah. You can do more damage than that. Yeah, because who'd have thought the more you build up to things, the stronger your guy gets as he's just chewing through, like, you know, waves of enemies. It's really cool. It's a fun little mobile game that you can pick up and put back down. You don't have to think about it while you're playing. And you can just have some fun with it. What about Grindstone? God, it's so good. God, I love Grindstone. Man, uh, it's such an entertaining game. That's why when you say, like, oh, it's on the phone, I was like, oh, download? I just like, put it in the folder of Grindstone. Get it. Um, grindstone is really awesome. Yeah. Um, the grindstone on its own actually validates Apple Arcade. And it's a shame it did not get the nod. Oh, Freaking Call of Duty. God. That game is not that good. I downloaded it, played it for like two seconds, and deleted it. Call of Duty Mobile, the only reason it's as popular as it is is because of Android. Apparently, um, that is true, because Grindstone, I think, is only on Apple Arcade. It is. Um, funny story, The um, one of the developers for Grindstone was very, very upset. They did not win at the Game Awards. I don't blame voiced, them. They voiced their concern on Twitter. Yeah, Capybara Games? Yeah. No, I do not blame them at all, because that game is excellent. And they got robbed. Like, uh, was it Destructoid gave him an 8.5 out of 10? I'd say it's a solid 9.5. Yeah. I know we don't go beyond 5 here, but I'm just saying on their scale, it's like, look, well, you, guys, half. Well, you, know. yeah, you, you guys are geeking out if you're not playing this game. You need to play it. It's excellent. It's just the right amount of stupid Viking nonsense to make it right. Who, what's the main guy's name? Yorg? Something like that? Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Grindstone. Let me uh, with uh, the Google. That's what I was trying to Google too. Uh, hang on. I think it's Jorg. Some... I never... Jorg. Yeah, Jorg. Okay, yeah, I never pay attention to his name. I just jump in. I didn't even know. I think I read it on an article somewhere. But... Yeah, but yeah, man, it's red, yellow, gr- blue, green, purple. Those are the colors of the monsters. You link them up to chain kills and get cool stuff to happen. Think of it like, like Candy Crush. You do a match three, but you like you match all the colors as many as you can get. And, and you know, you go slay the bad guys. It's, really cool. it's so good. Play it, please. But, yeah, that's it. I My uh, numero uno, I'm going to hold off. Okay. Yeah, it's my turn now. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> you so, have the power. My number one pick for unexpected gem, and to prove how awesome this game is, that we'll just describe it as grindstone <laughs> for my number one. Oh my freaking god! When I <laughs> w- when I sat there and thought of it, I'm like, oh man, which game should it be? And then I remembered my time with grindstone. I'm like, nope, this is hundred percent grindstone. Yep. Um, honestly, not even just at that. When you look at the way the sounds that enemies make when you put your, when your character kills them, just those little sounds too. It's just like the slash and like, uh, little gems pop. Grindstone, Apple Arcade came out, picked up a bunch of games. Didn't even know about this game. Decided, oh, I'll give this a shot. 
everything will you said the fact that this is a game this is mobile gaming done right it's a match three game it's very easy to pick up you don't like you can close it and then open it back up and you don't lose your spot in the mm -hmm. game you're not having to reboot it and the fact that it is there are no microtransactions there's None. no time limit like you have to wait 30 minutes before you can try again because you wasted your life it is all enclosed in this game and it is so freaking awesome that as Will, you said, this game alone justifies the $5 a month purchase for Apple Arcade full stop. Period. Grindstone is awesome. If Grindstone had not come out, Astral Chain would have been my number one. Okay. Grindstone came out and it was immediate. Like I, When I was thinking, like this is my number one. I love Grindstone. It is probably one of the games that will remain on my phone for a while. For yeah, a I, long, long while. I can't say I disagree with you at all. It's excellent. It, it's I, I I love. I don't have to say much because you've already talked about it. Like, if you have an Apple device, just do the free trial for Apple Arcade. You can get a month for free to try it out. And what's funny is it doesn't matter if you have an iPad, an iPhone, or an Apple TV. The game is available on all of those platforms. Yep, play this game. It's excellent. Play it. Play it. Play it. Play it. That is my winner for Unexpected Gem. Will, Sorry to yours? steal your thunder. No, 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 no. You didn't steal your thunder. I'm just saying, like, this is freaking awesome. Like, again, like a chance for us to see we have some similarities, but we have some differences yeah. based on what we played. So, Because my number one, my winner um, for Unexpected Gem was Cadence of Hyrule. Oh, I love man, this game. I got to play this. The I'm gonna... music is so good. The music makes everything. Now, um, for people who have played, like... Um, let me just hang on. Let me see here, because it's actually not a Nintendo game. This is a is Zelda it? game not made by Nintendo. Okay. And to me, it feels like the most Nintendo game that we've gotten in a while, outside of Breath of the Wild. Okay. As far as the Legend of Zelda skins goes. Because Zelda games are their own thing, and some hit, some don't. Like, Skyward Sword never even interests me. You know, that kind of stuff. But, yeah, very true. Very true. But we have... So, the guys, uh, Brace Yourself Games. Um, have you heard of Crypt of the Necrodancer? It's an indie game. Yes. Okay. These guys are the ones who made Cadence of Hyrule. Crypt of the Necrodancer featuring Legend of Zelda. That's the title. It's, it's man I have the demo for this and it I played is, a tiny bit of it and it's so good it is so freaking excellent I love that you can actually play as Zelda I am playing as Zelda in my game oh okay yeah so you can choose like wake up Zelda wake up Link and I was like no, no, no. Oh, wake Zelda oh I did not know this yeah that is so cool. you don't play as uh, I can't remember her name um, the main character from Crypto the Necrodancer, whatever her name is, but you yes. you get to choose as Zelda or Link, and I was like, no, 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 we play in Zelda, and you know it's crazy little thing here and there, but a hundred percent, it's a roguelike rhythm based game, and I never would have said a rhythm game and a roguelike should be made in the same game until now, dude. No, it's a hundred percent amazing. I love the music. You can. If you're not that great at rhythm, you can turn off the rhythm mode so you can just play the game. Mm -hmm. You're doing yourself a disservice if you do that, though, in all honesty. Like, it is so good. The enemies move and attack on the beat just like you do. Yes. And that is amazing. It's so well done. It's the old school top-down Zelda. It just makes sense. And it works so well. I hope they make a sequel. I really do, man. Because in all honesty, this game was amazing, and I didn't think anything about it until I ended up reading something on, uh, excuse me, Game Informer, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, okay, you know, well maybe, but you know, it's not Breath of the Wild, so we'll see, you know, because there's been a lot of ups and downs and that kind of stuff, and then I was like, wait, Nintendo's not making this? What's going on here? Yeah, I think they. I'm not mistaken, Cadence of Hyrule, they were given the license from Nintendo. They were allowed to do this, and it's the first time in a while that like one of the main Nintendo properties 
has had a game put out that wasn't Nintendo. Developer was Brace Yourself Games. Yep. Man, I don't know what else to say about this game. I love it. The music was great. Uh, Danny Baranowski? Uh, Baranowski, I'm sorry. Totally butchered that name. Is the composer for this game. And he did a great job. So, he did the music for Cannibal, Super Meat Boy, and The Binding of Isaac. And Crypto the Necrodancer. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. So... Yeah, if you can, go out. Uh, actually, I believe the Cadence of Hyrule music is on uh, on Spotify. Okay. Let me yes. double check. You will verify that for us. Take a look at see. Uh, that's a playlist. Hang on. Very, I, a very interesting pick. Very well-deserved pick. I played, again, I played the demo. There is a free demo for people who have, um, if you haven't played this game if you have a Nintendo Switch, you can go online, download the free demo of this to try it out before you decide to hmm. buy. So, hang on, where is? Dep- this? Sorry, it's not on there. It's definitely something worth considering if you are interested in this game. Yes, soundtrack. Let's see. It's interesting. Okay, oh. I don't know. Hang on. There's a link to it, but do you find it? Um, they take it off. Oh, it, somebody uploaded the music. So apparently, it's not legitimately out there. It's mm, people who have ripped okay. it from the game. Gotcha. Okay. So um, be careful if you try to do get this soundtrack because it's obviously not going to be from legitimate sources. Try to support the official creators. But you know, uh, there's a bunch of it on YouTube. So I don't know if you can get away with doing that or not, but. 100%. The game is awesome. You should buy it and play it if you like roguelikes or rhythms. I did not expect to have a roguelike get in my rhythm. It's like, you got chocolate with my peanut butter. You got peanut butter on my chocolate. <laughs> it's good. Okay. That's awesome. Some great picks there. So, guys, that is going to round out our um, third category, Unexpected Gem, with myself. My pick is going to be Grindstone. Your uh- pick... Cadence of Hyrule on the Nintendo Switch. So, very great picks, guys. Um, that is it for Unexpected Gem, and that is it for part one of our Game of the Year what? 2019 no. discussions. How did you feel? It's fine. Like, with the with the episode, the new, the different format? No, it's it's better. We're not going back. <laughs> We're never turning back. Nah. Um, nah. Rip the rear view mirror down, throw it out the window, <laughs> we're good. We're just gonna keep going. I, I really like this, too. Like, the different thought points we had for the games, different games and the same games that we had, like different uh, conversations we had, and the varied amount of games that we talked about. Like, mm-hmm. I think looking through this alone, one, two, three, four, five, six, at least nine to ten games that we discussed, different games. Yeah. Um, it was really, really cool to see, and I think we had a lot of really good conversations. Hopefully, everyone listening and watching, you guys enjoyed the episode as well. Um, this is part one we've got a few more parts to go remember we've got four parts so part two will be next Um, so definitely be on the listen for that guys Um, anything else you have to add man go enjoy you some good games that's what people really need to do enjoy good games don't care if people say they're bad nah look go have some fun play games but uh, thank you guys so much for listening um, um, as we said, guys, we've got our four parts um, for our 10 main categories. We will have our other categories. Those will be posted on rocketpunchgo.com. So be on the lookout for those if you want to see um, our winners for other categories that we've picked and made um, and learn more about all the different categories we've had. Uh, and then other than that, guys, thank you so much for listening in. We'll see you next time. Later.